essentially, in its most basic uh, level, it's forming a monetary union without a fiscal union. And so what that means is that uh, the Eurozone nations operate under a common currency which has significant benefits, but not having a, the ability to control the budgets and budget deficits that have been run by a number of Eurozone member nations has created the crisis. Uh, I actually had a colleague about 10 years ago when the, when the Eurozone was, was just being implemented that predicted it would fall at some point in time. And she said uh, essentially that without the ability to control uh, the budget deficits of each individual nation that they're going to have a crisis at some point in time and she was absolutely correct. There were a couple of economists back about three to four years ago that uh, from Harvard and from the University of Maryland, uh, Rogoff and Reinhardt, that did a study over centuries of financial crises and they found that whenever an economy, uh, the debt levels for a potential country exceeds 100% of their GDP, that that's a tipping point in terms of a financial crisis. And so we've seen a number of Eurozone countries, uh, being Greece in particular, that has exceeded uh, that level by a magnitude of almost two times. It's about 175% debt to GDP. So that's the root cause of the crisis is the monetary union, having monetary union, uh, for the couple of dozen countries that are in the Eurozone and not having uh, that fiscal integration, that fiscal union. From the perspective of the Greek people, uh, I believe that Greece should have exited several years ago. What has happened is the, uh, the politicians in Greece have, have continued to ask for, request, and borrow money from, uh, from the EU and have piled debt on top of debt that has to be repaid or forgiven, one or the other, uh, by the Greek people. And so the only way in order to pay off the debt is either for a combination of forgiveness uh, by the bondholders, those who have extended credit to Greece, or increased taxes uh, for the Greek people. And so it's much like an individual that has borrowed too much money relative to their earning power. And uh, Greece doesn't have the, the wherewithal in order to pay the debt because if you tax the Greeks to that level, uh, it will slow down economic activity even to a greater extent than it has now. And Greece has been in a severe recession for several years as a result. So uh, from my perspective, if, if Greece had defaulted on their debt and had left the euro and, and reintroduced the drachma as their currency, the Greek people would be in much better shape than they are now. The significant restructuring I see is inevitable. I don't believe that, that Germany, which is essentially the strongest nation in Europe, has, uh, has the highest level of, of GDP on a per capita basis. Maybe not per capita, but certainly uh, one of the top in terms of per capita GDP. But the largest economy in Europe and, uh, and really an export machine and has the, the greatest financial wherewithal. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor, has, has made it fairly clear that, uh, that Greek funding the, the bailouts of, of several nations and it falling on the taxpayers is just not an option. I'm glad that she said that. Uh, I think that certainly the bondholders, those that took the risk of, of extending credit to Greece, need to be held accountable and take uh, any type of what I would call haircuts or any reductions in the, in the value of their bonds so that, uh, to alleviate some of the problems that Greece has. But, uh, in terms of Germany, um, they're going to have tough, tough choices to make. And so I think Angela Merkel's political life will depend upon how she manages that process. The ideal solution to uh, solve the crisis would be for those member nations who are uh, seriously in debt, and that would be Greece followed by uh, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. Um, to exit, to exit the uh, euro, and to uh, to adopt their individual currencies, and uh, and do away with what I term is somewhat madness of trying to have a monetary union without a fiscal union. Now, if they can achieve a fiscal union, which I think is extraordinarily difficult to do, considering the different cultures uh, and the different objectives that uh, the different countries have, that uh, uh, that. Uh, um, 
some of those weaker nations exiting the Euro uh, would probably be better for them in the long run. And, uh, and then what that new Eurozone would look like with any type of common currency, I'm not sure it can ever be achieved in any shape, form, or fashion that's been advocated or put on the table now. I think it'll have to have substantial revisions to it in order to survive, and I'm not even sure it'll survive over the long term then. I think we'd be, Europe would be in much better shape now. Um, the world economy right now, in, in my opinion, is slowing. I think uh, Europe is right on the edge of recession. Uh, Japan is already in recession. Uh, China is slowing in terms of their growth. Uh, I'm not sure I believe the numbers that come out of China in terms of their GDP growth, but uh, they are positive, but probably not as high as they, they report. So we are entering a slowing down from the, from the growth we've had over the last few years. But I think if they had never adopted the euro, there would certainly be, uh, part of the reason for adopting the euro was efficiencies in terms of having a common currency and all of the attendant benefits that come from that. But uh, you wouldn't have had you wouldn't have had the problems that you have now in terms of the sovereign debt crises. One of the biggest issues that you have whenever you don't control your currency, but you do control your, the ability to borrow money at the national level is that since you can't inflate your currency, for instance, if Greek still had the drachma, one of the ways in order to come out of the crisis instead of default would be to, to uh, inflate the currency and for it to depreciate relative to other currencies. And so automatically, uh, the prices of their goods would drop. Well, the Greeks can't do that. And so now the entire adjustment mechanism that's falling on Greece is falling wages in the economy. So if wages are falling, then the ability for the Greek government to collect taxes is falling. And so you see unemployment at what we would consider massive levels and contraction in GDP that is just horrendous from a historical perspective.